So, welcome to today's reflection from Christchurch. Yesterday was Father's Day in the UK, and I had every intention of speaking to that. But at the six o'clock service, David spoke powerfully about being filled with the Spirit and solicited words or pictures from those present, asking what the Spirit might be saying to them. And from that, one powerful image came which resonated with me. It was a picture someone shared about hugging a cactus. David linked this to forgiving someone for a hurt. But it also reminded me of an old story that Ray, Te Ray Steadman of Peninsula Bible Church had told about a man, it has to be a man, who was concerned that he really didn't know the right way to show affection to those he cared for. And he was walking past a second-hand bookshop and saw a large volume in the window inscribed, How to Hug. He immediately rushed in and bought it, only to find to his great chagrin that it was volume three of an encyclopedia. But the juxtaposition of those two thoughts did lead me to this reflection. Let me go to that second one first. The UK has, I think, an undeserved reputation for being overly reserved. But there is some truth in that stereotype. So in that sense, we do need to learn how to hug, to learn what it means to hug. First, though, a definition. Hugs can be physical or metaphorical, with the metaphorical ones being no less real demonstrations of Christian love and not least for safeguarding reasons, because physical hugs can be misconstrued. We should focus on this metaphorical side of hugging unless we know someone really, really well. So what do I mean by a metaphorical hug? Well, I mean that we should learn how, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can get alongside someone. We can appreciate their needs, their pain or unhappiness, and help them, we can show them Christ's love. The how in the how to hug comes from us listening to God because he will show us those people who need reassurance and comfort. And then it comes down to us to do something about it by showing that we care, by showing that Christ cares and that he is the answer by reminding them that even in the midst of their darkest hour, God will work things through for good in a way that we may only ever understand way, way down the line. And by reminding them that we can trust him. Of course, the most famous verse in this category is Romans 8, verse 28, which reads, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Famous as it is, it's a verse that should be shared only with great sensitivity. These situations are not easy. It's not easy to get alongside someone in that way. And it's not easy because we, as we hug, we open up ourselves to share their pain, to share their burden which we're there for, which in a way brings me back to hugging a cactus. I know that not all cacti are prickly, but you get the picture. Hugging a cactus can be painful. Confronting someone who has hurt you and whom you need to forgive can be painful. It brings back the memories of the hurt. And sometimes it doesn't seem to make any difference to the person you're hugging. They may not be able to understand how they've hurt you, and indeed may in their heart be feeling similarly hurt towards you. But there is a clear message. Reach out, break through the barrier of buried feelings, and even those feelings that are not so buried. Hug that cactus. Let the love of Christ infuse your being, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, healing life flows. I'm not a gardener and I'm not good with recognizing plants, but I do recognize Schlumbergera. 
Now I cheated and looked it up on Google. Schlumberger is a species of epiphytic cacti that is commonly known as Christmas cactus. Or in the States, it's also called a Thanksgiving cactus. With the right care and attention, this rather boring plant produces a beautiful flowering display. Just as it's true for Slumbergera, it is true for our metaphorical cacti, our cacti of hurt, of damaged relationships, of, of loneliness. If we listen to the Holy Spirit and learn how to hug, we can help restore hope and peace and joy in our lives and in the lives of others. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 11, Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. I'm sure that the pictures that David shared will have sparked many thoughts in people's minds as the Holy Spirit prompted them. And the same picture may well have given rise to many different ideas. But for me, the reminder that we need to follow that admonition of Paul is right there at the top. Let's pray. Father God, help us to show your love to others. Guide us, Father, through your Holy Spirit to those who need help and comfort. Help us to confront the needs for forgiveness, our own and others, keeping the focus at all times on you. Help us, Lord, to share your love and peace and to give glory to you in the way that we live, for Christ's sake. Amen. The song I've chosen to go with this reflection today is Who Am I? by Casting Crowns, which reminds us of how God sees us and helps us to learn to model that love. And if you play this on YouTube, just look at some of the comments that have comments that have been posted there. Have a great week. God bless.